Hi guys and welcome to the Sunderland vs Hull City match preview. So Sunderland do welcome Hull to the stage of light on Friday. It's a half five kickoff. I do believe it is on Sky for those who are wondering. And it is going to be a challenging one. I think well every game in the Championship is a challenging one. But Hull themselves, if we have a look at them before we uh, have a little discussion on ourselves... Hull, uh, last five games, I think they've drew the last couple. Last time out, they uh, drew 0-0 against Rotherham. Rotherham went down to 10 men, although, you know, albeit it was quite late on. I think about 10 minutes left or so, they went down to 10 men. Hull, of course, being at home, you expect them to maybe uh, get away with the win there, but they didn't. Uh, Rotherham did well to hang on to a 0-0 and get themselves a point, despite only being down to 10 men. Before that, it was another draw. Um, they have picked up a defeat as well. Um, another draw and a win. I believe that's the way... It did go. Um, yeah, so if we take a look at these results, yeah, they 0 0 against Rotherham. They drew with Reading away from them, which isn't a bad point, to be fair. They did get beat against Burnley. Half the team, you know, the majority of the league gets beat against Burnley. Apart from us, of course, we did draw 0 0 uh, last time out against them at Turf Moor. The first team to keep killing sheet at Turf Moor. I'll keep throwing that in there. Uh, yeah, so Hull did lose 3 1 against Burnley. Um, a draw away from home against Coventry, that's a good result as well, that's a good point, that's a solid point. And before that they beat West Brom 2-0 and they're not a bad side whatsoever. West Brom, I expected them to be there thereabouts at the beginning of the season, it hasn't quite gone that way for them. But, um, albeit, you know, it's it's just a massive, if you have a look at their results and their fixtures, it's just so inconsistent and that's why they find themselves where they are in the league and that's 17th. Like I said, you could sneak that win against Rotherham, but they drew. Um, maybe one against Reading away from home. Um, same with Coventry if they turned some of those draws into wins they would have been sound this season they have, they have good players as well it's not like they've got a poor team or anything they haven't there's just so many draws um, if you have a look at the league I'm sure they've picked up quite a lot of draws um, if we take a look they have 12 draws 12 wins 12 draws 15 defeats they find themselves in 17th they're not going to be going down they're not going to be going up they won't be doing anything like that so it depends what kind of whole city we're going to come against. Come up against should I say I, I can't see them coming Coming up to the stage of and just rolling over because they don't have too much to play for. Um, they might play a bit of youth or try certain things out. They'll have no pressure under them at all. A lot of teams like to come up to the stage of and make a name for themselves anyway. Um, so it, it isn't going to be an easy game at all. They have their own threats, as I say. Um, they're not going to be quite like Burnley in the sense that Burnley are a pure possession-based side. And Burnley probably were the only side in the league, you know, as well as Sheffield United, a little bit to an extent where... We do just absorb pressure. You know, against every, most other teams, they will kind of sit back, expect that to an extent against Hull at the stage of the night, but not just, you know, entirely, because they do have players going forward that can damage us. Um, and on the counter-attack, they, they, they do have uh, they do have weapons across the pitch. So um, it's something to be wary of. But as I say, 17th, not a massive amount to play for. It depends what Hull's going to turn up. Is it a Hull that wants to finish the season on a high? Or is it, it's, it's, you know, a team that have, you know, put the... But taking the foot off the gas a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Um, but in terms of us, <clears throat> I'd like to see us make a couple of changes from that 0-0 draw against Burnley. It was a brilliant draw, a brilliant point, don't get me wrong. But I just feel like there was a couple of players on the pitch that started that um, didn't necessarily impress me. And I think with a couple of players against Burnley, a bit more flair, I think we could have maybe even done a job over him. We had the chances. Um, it wasn't a great game against Burnley from either side, really. Um, but I, th I think with a bit more quality on the pitch earlier, we could have maybe got away with three points at Burnley. Um, so we will have a look at my preferred starting eleven for this game. And as you can see, I've uh, stuck with the same back line that took on uh, Burnley with 0-9 and Bart in the middle, who were absolutely outstanding. Gucci was my man of the match. He was phenomenal left back, so he absolutely stays in the team for me. Just come back from injury. You know, Sirkin, he did play uh, with the youth squad. He managed to get 90 minutes, I do believe. Um, so, you know, what Sirkin is fit, he slipped straight in for me, but purely because of Gucci's performance against Burnley, he starts. Trey Hume right back, of course. In the middle, Daniel and Mishu. I would bring Mishu back in starting 11 in place of Equa, who, you know, like I said, I'm not going to sit here and say he's a bad player or anything. I don't think he is at all. I think he just he needs a run, a run in the side, which is contradictory because I'm not putting him in the side, but I just feel like Mishu brings a bit more. He has that bit of tenacity and a bit of quality and drive to go forward. I feel like Equa, the times I have seen him, is a little bit slow on the ball. That comes with time, like, as I say, and he just lacks that sort of sharpness. But sometimes when we did try and break against Burnley, he puts his foot on the ball and he just takes an absolute age before the, the simple pass. You know, we did the simple things correctly, but it, sometimes you need a little bit more than just the simple things. So I'll bring Mishu back into the middle now. Up top, I think this is the best we're going to get, to be fair. This is probably the best 
up top four. I think we would get when Pritchard is on form. I would replace Bar with Pritchard, but Pritchard didn't really do it for me against Burnley. So I'll put Bar in there. He's an exciting young talent. I'll really, really like the look of him. It's just it's strange though for me with Bar because sometimes with Bar he he seems to have this sort of quick acceleration on the ball. Uh, he's not bothered when there's three or four players around him. And he'll twist and turn and quickly try and drive forward. And I love seeing that version of Abdullah Bar. But then we get another version sometimes where, a bit similar to Equa, where he'll put the, his foot on the ball, just plays quickly, you know, making runs, darting forward, sit, you know, easy passes to make, and he kind of refuses and he slows the play down. And then he'll sort of lay it sort of in a backwards position, if that makes sense. He'll, he'll just sort of lay it backwards rather than try to drive forward. And it depends which one wants to turn up. Um, but, you know, Abdullah Boy, if it is that version that wants to drive every opportunity, then with the likes of Jack Clark, Roberts and Diallo as well, it, it could be a, a massacre at uh, at the stage of Martin Friday if they're all on form. Jack Clark for me is absolutely outstanding as well as Roberts. is it, It's stupid that the, the, some of the talent that we have got going forward. It's just a shame we don't have a striker, which is something we've been crying for all season. So yeah, it's a team again without a striker. Gellhart doesn't start for me. That is the team I would have hundred percent go with. Um, we just look infinitely more threatening without Gellhart on the pitch. So that is the team I would go with. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Of course. Uh, if you agree with me, brilliant. <laughs> I mean, if not, again, it doesn't really matter. Uh, opinions are opinions. It's always interesting to see what you guys think. Uh, but anyway, getting on to my score prediction from this game. You know, I think we've uh, managed to do really well over the last few games, considering the, the calibre of opponents we have come up against. I keep saying that. I can't give the lads much more credit. Uh, but in terms of a score prediction for this game, we're back at home. Friday kickoff. Uh, Friday evening kickoff. Half five, as I say. 17th hole. There's still a glimmer of hope that we could get into the playoffs. A, a very light, small smidgen of hope. I, I will put that. But I think we just have a bit more to play for. And I'd like to see, or I'd like to think the players would uh, would show that in their performance. So I'm going to go for a Sunderland 3-0 win at the stage of my life. And I think Clark is going to get a double. And I think Patrick Roberts is going to get himself on the score sheet as well. That would be a fantastic way to begin our weekend, won't it? Um, so yeah, I'm going to go for a 3-0 Sunderland win. Again, I don't think it's going to be easy. And 3-0 makes it sound a bit harsh. But I just feel like if those lads are on form and we go for the lineup, I think we, sh we should go for I, I can't say anything but a Sunderland win at the moment. Um, before this run of games against the teams, we have come up against... Uh, and we, we, you know, form we're going into, into these games. I had very, very little hope. And I thought the, the season would kind of just pitter out a little bit. But we're still fighting. We're still producing performances against the top-end teams. Um so I'd like to think that we'd show that against Hull as well. So I'm going to go for a 3-0 Sunderland win. But that'll be my preview to the game, guys. If you have enjoyed, hit the like button for me. It'd be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully-fledged member of the Sarni Army. But for now, take care and stay jamming. <laughs>